Hey, Disco Dan, why don't you tell us what you think about that win? All right, sweet tea. You are Locked On Kraken, your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Kraken, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where we bring you your favorite team every single day. Erica L. Ayala here in uh, my Pirates hat because I'm um, coming to you after a Seattle Kraken win. No, no, no. This was not just a win. This was a throttling of the Montreal Canadiens, and we are going to talk about it on today's show. Before we get into it, want to let you know, today's episode of Locked on Kraken, brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. So visit FanDuel.com today to get started. Wow. we. Holy cannoli, that's cracking hockey, baby. This was a dominant, dominant eight to two win by our Seattle Kraken. They put up a four piece in the first frame alone. And I mean, can we talk about the 50% on the power play? This is the potential that exists within this Seattle Kraken team. And what I love is that they were getting it from the defensive side of things. And so let's just go over who scored in this game. Jamie Alexiak, Riker Evans, Jaden Schwartz, Oliver Bjorkstrand, Brandon Montour, Brandon Montour, Brandon Montour, and Ellie Tolvanen. That's just the goals. We had assists from Mahura, Beneers, McCann, Stevenson, Alexiak and Schwartz, we already mentioned. Um, I mean, this was just Eberly. Uh, Berkey. Berkey. This was almost, almost a complete win. And I- I'm going to break it down for you. I want to start, though, with something that Chandler Stevenson said post game. Obviously, he's the man of the hour of the evening, whatever you want to say. But towards the end of his post game last night in the locker room, he said something that I really want to break down. So let's hear from Brandon Montour after this big win where he gets a natural hat trick against the Montreal Canadiens. From Dima and Jamie was mentioning you guys were making a point on throwing pucks to the net. Was it something you guys identified? No, I mean, I think, you know, especially the last, you know, bunch of games here, um, got to get more traffic to the net. Uh, make it, I think it's, especially these games where we've lost, make it easier on their, their goalies, especially especially last game, the game before. Um, get in their face, kind of make it tough on them, you know, regardless of if it's going to the net or just close to somebody driving the net. I think we, you know, are trying to take more pride in just getting there and creating traffic and, um, obviously, it's nice for the fours not to tip them, and you know the D get on the board there. And I think we came out hot. Obviously, it's nice to get one early, uh, get a few early, and then I think we just kept rolling. I think the energy level was good. Again, I, I kind of preached after the after the the game there that you know a standard. Obviously, losing a few shouldn't be shouldn't be the standard. We should be upset and kind of frustrated a little bit of just that's not how we, you know as a team we're we're good enough to not be in that position and. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a tough road trip and a long road trip. So I think guys brought the energy and, you know, wanted to kind of come out game one and, and, uh, you know, get a win. And, you know, obviously that's a good one. Monty. I love that he's setting the tone. Now that's some captain crap right there. That is some Seattle Kraken captain style. I'm stuttering over my words. I'm so excited. That is some captaincy leadership potential. Now, of course, he's not wearing a letter officially for the Seattle Kraken, but Dan Bilesma has told us that there is leadership through and through this lineup. And the fact that we've been talking about this, the, the, the losses have been tough. Um, 
And we've also seen the promise of when this team starts getting it together. And for Monty, and I'm sure there were others, to sit down, have a conversation with the team and say, listen, we're better than this. We don't we we are better than losing multiple games in a row. Lock it up, get it together. And they did it on the offensive end again with their defense, as we heard in that little snippet from Dan Bosma that I played in the open. We're going to get back to Dan Bilesma here, but I, I liked also if you were able to watch the broadcast, Allison Lucan, I believe it was in the second intermission, talked also about the passing, the passing, the Ellie Tolvin and goal, I mean, was tic-tac goal, I think was the call that we got from uh, John Forslund, the passing, the communication, Monty, uh, Brandon Montour talked about that um, a little bit. I just saw it be better. There was a more urgency. And I want to play this clip from Dan Bilesman next because he talks about what was missing um, when it came to the offense, particularly thinking about the power play. Did I mention 50%, three of six on the power play? And, you know, this is, is something that we talked about. I've talked about that this team is maybe – playing too direct, they're holding on to the puck too long. So, you know, uh, Dan Bilesma identified that after this game in Montreal as one of the things that helped them get the win. Here's Dan Bilesma. You seem to have a lot of forwards in front when they were doing that. How much was that what, what you wanted to see more of? Yeah, I, I think uh, at times uh, at times this year we've um, been too much on the – um, the perimeter, and we've been too much not a shooter's mentality, and um, I think that's you know it, it's, there's no secret about uh, it's really scoring goals uh, in this league is you you got to have shot volume, you got to have guys at the net, you got to have people in and around the net, and it's not just one guy, it's two guys that can converge on the net and um, get the opportunity. And, and uh, tonight, I think every in the first in particular, we were we were very good at that. So, again, the, the Seattle Kraken get a big win. I want to break down uh, what we're seeing. Let's start with Allison Lucan and the post-game analysis. The shot quality was actually really good for both sides. Uh, shot quality registered at 4.0 for the Seattle Kraken, a 3.9 for the Montreal Canadiens. Shots on goal 23 for the Seattle Kraken as compared to 30 for Montreal. We're going to talk about that and Joey Decord's performance a little bit later on the show. Um, now, this is interesting because I, I, you know, I love a game flow. I love me a good game flow chart. Those who are everydayers and OGers, you know, I love a good game flow chart. And I didn't prepare the game flow chart here because I was like, what the crap is going on here? And of course, I say that and I'm going to show you the game flow chart because the, the, the Montreal Canadiens really owned the game flow. How do you do that in a loss? It's it's a difficult thing to do. It's quite possible, but it's difficult. So here's the game flow chart. And you can see that this is favoring in a big way, especially late in the game, it's favoring Montreal. And so when we look at the post-game instant analysis by Allison Lucan, Pucks in the offensive zone, 37% for the Seattle Kraken as compared to 41% were the Canadians. Again, this was an eight to two game. So what were, the, and, and again, I mentioned the shots on goal 30 to 23 in favor of Montreal, the shots, the shot attempts 50, five, zero to 32. I mean, that is a good number for us. So, you know, 50 to 32 in favor of Montreal entry denials, 59% to 56%. For all intents and purposes, I think that's pretty close. Zone exits, 82% for Montreal, 76% for Seattle. Puck battle wins. If you're watching on YouTube, I might have given this one away. Puck battle wins, 56% for the Seattle Kraken, 44% for Montreal. What this Instant analysis tells me is that the Seattle Kraken could have easily lost this game. They could have lost this game, but they fought. 
And Dan Bilesma talked specifically about Ellie Tolvanen at some point. Jamie Alexiak has been fantastic for the Seattle Kraken as of late. And I'm actually going to talk to Zane Begg a little bit more about Jamie. So we're going to break down his game. But this was, it looks very dominant on the scoreboard, right? It looks pretty dominant on the scoreboard, but it was because there were things that the Seattle Kraken were starting to pull together that made this win possible. So, yep, I know the JV Jones hat is done, whatever, belt, blah, 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 blah. This isn't as fancy. I might have to spruce it up. Uh, rhinestone it like I'm Dolly Parton or whatever, but uh, this is this is my my winning hat, uh, you know. So that we're gonna go with that. Um, you know, thirty shots faced for Joey Decord, twenty eight saves, fifteen shots faced, uh, twenty three saved, and. It wasn't a quality start for the Canadians. We know we ran their, their starting goaltender out. And so I think also some of this we can look to, and I'm not going to really get into this except for mentioning it in passing, but Montreal didn't have a great um, a great time in net, so that could be a part of it. Uh, I think also if I really wanted to, I could break down Montreal's defense. But again, this is not locked on Canadians. This is locked on Kraken. Quality start for Joey Dax. Goals saved as measured in expected goals. Minus four. Minus four for Montreal. Um, almost uh, two above expected for Joy Dax. And I think I saw another stat that gave him three credit for three goals above expected. So again, without the winning puck battles, without getting some not so great goaltending on the other side, this could be a different game. So while I like the eight goals, it looks good for us. There's still some things that we need to sort out. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to talk about it. I forgot I still had this up. We're going we're gonna to talk about it on today's episode of Locked on Kraken. Um, because, you know, I, I want us to get into a little bit more how the defenders really stepped up big time in this game and why that's important. It's critically important. And although we didn't have the most time in the offensive zone, the exits and entries actually favored Montreal. When you have your blue liners step up, good things happen. That's why our next uh, segment, we're going to talk offense to defense. That's coming up on Locked on Kraken. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, which is the best place to get real money in sports action. Over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. Because over at Prize Picks, you just pick more or less on at least two, at least two players for a shot to win up to 100x your cash, run your game all season long on prize picks. And, you know, I talked about the World Series um, when I talked about prize picks the other day. Offense exploded for the Yankees. We probably shouldn't have known. We probably should have known they would wake up their bats eventually. But uh, I don't know. Momentum. On the side of the Dodgers. I don't know. What are you taking? What are you taking? Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You can, of course, look at the World Series odds. Uh, NBA, NHL. The, the Seattle Kraken, of course, play again on Thursday. So that might be a great time for you to step up and start with prize picks. And this is how you do it. You just head over, download the prize picks app today. Use promo code locked on NHL and get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today. Use code locked on NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks run your game. Just like the Kraken, they ran some game on Montreal. Thanks as always for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily destination. Erica L. Ayala here, 
your host of Locked on Kraken. I mentioned we had a great episode with Gil Martin on Monday on Locked on NHL. I will be with Gil and Rachel once again on Friday on the Locked on NHL show to talk about women's hockey. And we're going to talk about PWHL expansion because it was officially announced at an ESPN summit. I was at a Sportico summit the week uh, or last week where it was also mentioned. So this is happening. And you best believe, I think, well, I'm not going to tell you what I think. You're going to have to listen to Locked on NHL and the Women's Hockey Spotlight. Okay, the Seattle Kraken offense to defense. When we look at this game, obviously Montour getting it done. Alexiak credited with the first goal. <clears throat> Excuse me, Riker Evans gets a goal. Um, you know, just a great, a great showing from the defense. And, you know, when you have defenders that are able to get in the play, it really helps spread the ice. Now, um, if you look at the um, heat maps for this game, the heat maps really tell you how integral, 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 however you want to say it, uh, the defensemen were. We're also going to talk about some things that I'm not really loving about this heat map, but that will be in the next segment. But if you look at the Seattle crack inside of things, and I'm going to make sure that we focus on one side of the ice, at least for now, here we go. So you see that the Seattle Kraken do have some goals, um, you know, that Tolvi goal right in front. Um, but then you have this, I believe is the Alexiak goal here, or maybe it's this one. But, you, you know, there's there's goals coming in from the point. Um, and, you know, I, I really love that the Seattle Kraken were getting the offense going. And this is just five on five. If I show you all of the goals, um, you know, you still see that there is there there are these hot streaks, not as much as in the front of the net, which you also love. But a part of that goes from just some great play um, in the defensive or excuse me, in on the blue line is what I'm trying to say. And although we're talking a lot about our defensemen, I I can't remember if it was. I'm, I'm forgetting now and I should have written it down because I should have known I was going to forget. But there was one play early in the first period where the Seattle Kraken, now it didn't yield a goal, but I remember saying and seeing that the Seattle Kraken, I, I want to say it was either Bjorkstrand, Burakovsky, or Wright, but I, I think it was Andre Burakovsky. And so the, the, the Canadians are trying to push the puck out of the zone, just like pass it out of the zone, we heard Allison Lucan talk a lot again in the intermission reports about how passing the puck, you can move the puck faster than when you're skating with it and carrying the puck. Montreal trying to clear the zone. And Berkey, I, I'm almost positive it was Berkey, comes in like a bat out of hell, comes out of nowhere, presumably, at least from the camera angle that I saw at the time. And he steps up on that blue line. So he's occupying the space that was left vacant because at the time, one of our blue liners, and I can't remember if it was a, a shift, um, you know, a line change or if there was someone down low. The point is, the reason that I mention that is because we're talking about blue, line, blue liners, obviously, Brandon Montour, that's huge. Evans and Jamie Alexiak getting on the board, that's huge. Monty actually joked around also in saying that, you know, it's great when you can get a shot in and the forwards don't tip it in. But the reason that happens is because the forwards committed to protecting the offensive zone. What do I mean by protecting the offensive zone? Well, if your def if your defenders um, or being active maybe is the better way of saying it, but also the, with the Berkey thing, I'm almost positive it was Berkey. Um, with Berkey, it was a little bit different because I do feel he was protecting the offensive zone, giving the Seattle Kraken another chance, another bite at the apple to reset and recycle in the offensive zone. The reason that is effective, the reason that's important is because you, if you have your defenders, whether they're shooting, whether they're cycling, 
below the goal line because they are very active in the offense. Maybe they started a breakaway. Doesn't happen often, but it does happen. You need for your forwards to be able to occupy the empty space that the defensemen, um, you know, are no longer occupying because again, they are now the primary attack in your offense. That comes from awareness. That comes from communication. That comes from some of what Dan Bilesma has wanted to see from this team, not just high IQ, but willing the team to win the puck. That did not directly result to a goal, even a shot on goal, if I remember correctly. But that is critically important as the Seattle Kraken move forward, especially if they're going to get more offensive performances from their defensemen. If you listen to the, the intermission reports, you heard Allison Lucan talk about Rover and we've had her on the podcast before to talk about what that exactly means. She felt that Brandon Montour is a perfect example of kind of this new style defenseman. So these are things that I both like that we saw in this game. And as much as we're giving credit to D, I really want to shout out the full team for having an awareness and knowing it's basically if anyone ever played basketball and I think they probably, I think they use the same term in hockey. I will be honest. I don't know because I've never played hockey. I've never been a hockey coach, but there's like a, a three man weave. There's a five man weave. It's basically when you pass the puck or you're moving in space, you literally take the space of the person that is moving closer to the basket or in this case, the net. And so there's never a space in that weave you know, because if you think about like braiding hair or some of y'all know what I'm talking about, like as far as what literal weaving and, you know, basket weaving, hair braiding, stuff like that, because you're laying over, you're overlaying, right? The space. That's effectively what I saw. And I really, really liked it. Can you tell I'm kind of like just really leaning in fully to this because it's something that to me, again, talks about communication. It talks about awareness and being active in your offense, even when you don't have the puck. And that's how good things happen. Another thing, because I can stay on this forever, but we have one more segment to go. Uh, you know, another thing that this does is that when you have your forwards creating space and creating traffic, being menacing in front of the net, that means that your defensemen are given a little bit more space. They have a larger target. Things are harder for the goalie. And that's something that Brandon Montour talked about. Jamie Alexiak talked about it. Um, uh, these are all post-game. Um, you know, we heard Dan Bilesman talk about it. It was part of the, again, post-game show. These are things, these are habits that we need to continue to see from the Seattle Kraken. Because as I mentioned in the last segment, some of these stats at least on, you know, the score sheet, they don't promise a win. They do not promise a win. Joey Decord had a great game. Exits and entries, not great. Game flow, in favor of Montreal. The shot volume, in favor of Montreal. We had more power play opportunities, and we executed on those power play opportunities. But there is a scenario in where if we had these exact same stats, the Seattle Kraken could lose this game if they don't do some of what I just talked about. Did I go a little hard in the paint, so to speak? It, and these are, uh, they're not defensive tactics or tendencies. They are very much a part of the offense, but they are an, an attack mode. They are, again, a team attack. They are about communication, awareness on the ice, and just willing yourself to keep the puck in your offensive zone. And I love it. Wasn't a great game. I know the score is tempting to say this is the best cracking game. I don't know. Maybe ever. No, 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 no. But that's hockey, baby. That's sports. That's life. You can play a great game and sometimes you lose. You can play a stank game and sometimes you win. What you want to be able to do is impact the things that, regardless of a win, regardless of a loss, are going to give you the best chance moving forward. And the Seattle Kraken, they did that. Overwhelmingly, they did that. Coming up next, I want to talk about an area where I don't think they did that so well. 
But thank goodness for Joey Decor. And let's talk about that coming up on Locked on Kraken. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. And we know it is the NFL season and FanDuel has you covered because right now new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets when you win with your first $5 bet. FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the National Football League all in one, all in one place. If you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. So just visit FanDuel.com and join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets when you place and win your first $5 bet. Okay, so I've been mentioning it mentioning it a lot, especially when we did our division preview. But the 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 Seattle Kraken uh, regular season points for 20, 24, 25, still at eighty seven point five. If you take the over, that's at a minus one thirteen right now. The under is at a minus one thirteen as well. So head over to FanDuel. That's where you can do it all, including, of course betting on the NFL. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the National Football League, and of course, us here on the Locked On Kraken Pod, on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making Locked On Kraken a part of your daily destination. Erica L. Ayala here, and although I am wearing, I am wearing the wind hat, my little, you know, hood version of the Davy Jones hat. I'm going to, I'm going to zhuzh it a little bit more. It needs a pop of color, especially since I have dark hair. Like where does the hat end? Where does my hair begin? Who even knows? Um, <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll get there. The more wins we have, the more reason I have to zhuzh up the hat. So let's get after it. Okay. I've alluded to some things, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go to this heat map again because we talked about it on yesterday's episode and this is historically a problem with the Seattle Kraken. Look how spicy it is in front of the net for our opponent. Look at how spicy it is in front of the net for our opponent. And I told you, I really am not sure I have an opinion, at least not right now, maybe after yesterday's game. I said yesterday, I didn't have an opinion on whether Philip Grubauer or Joey Dax was better in high traffic. Joey Decord did his thing last night. Another quality start, at least two goals above expected on saves. But we got to clean things up. One of the goals that Montreal scored, Joey thought he had the save, but there was no one to clean up, you know, clean up the, the crease. And I, I don't... I don't think it's worth getting down on the defense. I don't think it was necessarily like, oh, you know, maybe Joey wants to have that one back. I, I mean, and I think, honestly, if this were, were a closer game, I might be more critical. Do I think Joey Decord could have probably saved that? Yes. Would I have liked someone to sweep that off the crease? Absolutely. And Joey had no idea. He made the initial save and had no idea where the puck went. That's when you have to communicate I don't love it that we have a lot of traffic in front of net, and this is something that it's not going to get easier on this road trip. So I want to see the Seattle Kraken continue to really push the agenda there. Again, exits and entries weren't great. The fact that you can win a game 8-2 to two and you lose on the game flow, what's that about? I mean, we were attacking, at clinically attacking early, four goals. Four goals in the first quarter. I said quarter because I'm just coming off. The, four goals in the first period. I'll take that. We have not started great, not just this season, but historically. So I will take that. And it's kind of it's kind of my job. That's how I see it here to give you some real talk. And again, the numbers in other scenarios, other situations, the Seattle Kraken might not win this game. 
And so something that is preventable, something that we can do, something that, again, if we're going to have our defensemen step up in a big way like they did in this game, then we have to get back to help Joey. We have to communicate with Joey. We have to be more active in front of our goal and our net front on the defensive side, just like we saw improvements on the offensive net front presence. That's what I want to see. Joey's doing great. Gets another consecutive start. I'm going to talk with Zame about it for Thursday's episode. I mean, I know they said, oh, equitable split in net, blah, blah, blah. Is Joey our number one? Is Joey our number one? Come on, come on. Tell me the truth. What do you think? Is it too early? I, I'm I'm kind of leaning towards that. Maybe it's a little too early. Also, this is a road trip. We know we're going to see Philip Grubauer, and we need to see Philip Grubauer. And I've said it, um, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times over. At least some of the losses credited to Philip Grubauer in his history with the Seattle Kraken, which is the same timeline as the history of the Seattle Kraken, it's because we weren't protecting the house. Got to protect the house. Got to protect the house, baby. Got to do it. Because again, there is a scenario where we lose this game. This kind of a game, statistically speaking, I don't think you get a win like this later in the season. I don't think you get a win like this. You de- I, I would argue you definitely don't get a win like this in the playoffs. So we'll take it. We want it. And ever upward. Excelsior. I believe that's what that means. Ever up, That's the uh, motto of New York State. Ever upward, excelsior. Got to, got to be better. But I'll take the win. I've got my, I got to come up with it. So it can't be the Davy Jones hat because that one was super cool. I, 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 the Uma hat, am I going to just go full Uma on you? I, I don't know. I got to think about it. If you have some suggestions, let me know. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to one another. Hold fast. Stay true. And I will catch you on the next episode where Zayn and I, we're going to talk about Shane Wright. I know I talked about him on yesterday's episode. The time on ice numbers from this game, should we be concerned? Not just about Shane, but about some other players that I think have a lot of potential to help us offensively. We will get into that coming up on another episode of Locked on Kraken. But for now, hold fast, stay true. And say loud and proud because we just won eight to two. Let's go cracking. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace out, everybody.